Well, hello, Python peeps on YouTube. Welcome to another Python web scraping tutorial where today we are going to delve deeper into the beautiful soup library and we are going to talk about how to navigate trees. First of all, let's talk about other beautiful objects that we need to mention. So far in this tutorial, we have seen two types of objects in the beautiful soup library, which are beautiful soup objects. Uh, we have seen them uh, in the previous code example as BS object, obj, BS obg. And then we have the tag objects uh, retrieved in lists or individually by calling find and find all on beautiful soup objects or drilling down as in this example bs obj div dot h1. However, there are two more objects in the library that although less commonly used are still important to know about. And these are navigable string objects, uh, which, which are used to represent text within tags rather than the tags them, themselves. Some functions operate on and produce navigable strings rather than tag objects. And the last one is the comment object, uh, which, which are used to find HTML comments in comments tags, like in examples on the example on the right. So these four four objects are the only objects you will ever encounter uh, as of the time of this uh, recording this tutorial in in the beautiful soup library. So let's get into the subject of this tutorial video and this is uh, let's talk about navigating the trees. The find all function is responsible for finding tags based on their name and attribute. But what if you need to find the tag based on its location in a document? That's where tree navigation comes in handy. And in earlier tutorial, we looked at navigating a beautiful soup in a single direction. For example, with this example line, first line. So now let's look at navigating up, across, and diagonally, diagonally through HTML trees using uh, uh, the online shopping site from pythonscraping.com pages. So if you navigate to that um, web page, and this is the web page, and if you look at the HTML structure, uh, you can just right click and inspect. Uh, you will say, see how it's uh, structured. So we have a, a, the HTML then we have the body, then we have a div wrapper, we have an h1 heading, then we have some div content, uh, div id with the uh, content, um, I'm not sure what you call this, but uh, the attribute, I guess. Uh, then you have some paragraphs, and Then you have this ta table ID, which is called gift list, and you have some table rows, table headers, you have image, header, and then you get into the each gift. With the item title and then the description. Uh, and price and the image. So now we have a uh, an overview how this uh, page is structured. So and we also have the footer here. So we will use this same HTML structure as an example uh, for the next few code tutorials. So. Uh, and now let's uh, talk about how to deal with children and other descendant, descendants. So in computer science and some branches of mathematics, you often hear about horrible things done to children, moving them, storing them, removing them, uh, and even killing them. Fortunately, uh, in this section, we will focus only on selecting them, thankfully. So in the beautiful soup library, as well as, as many other libraries, there is a distinction be drawn between children and descendants. 
Uh, much like in a human family tree, children are always exactly one tag below a parent, whereas descendants can be at any level in the tree below a parent. Uh, for example, the TR tag are children of the table tag, whereas TR, TH, TD, image, uh, span tags uh, are all descendants of the table tag, at least in our example page. So all children are descendants, but not all descendants are children. In general, beautiful soup functions will always deal with the descendants of the current tag selected. Uh, for instance, <coughs> uh, for instance, bs object body dot h one selects the first h one tag that is descendant of the body tag. It will not find tags located outside of the body. Similarly, bs object dot div dot find all uh, image. Uh, we'll find the first div tag in the document and retrieve a list of all image tags that are descendants of that div tag. So if you want to find only descendants that are, that are children, we can use the dot children tag. Let's try that out in our uh, editor. So let's do a new file. Let's call it uh, scrape scrape shop children just for an example on your lib dot request import the url open definition and from bs4 import beautiful soup class and then we Put in our HTML variable and open our web page. So that's page three dot HTML, and then we find our beautiful soup object. Soup. Put in our URL in there and define our parser. And then we have a loop. And we loop over the table where we want to go over ID. With the table with the ID called gift list. Just remember that here is the table ID. And we want to have the two. Um, should be outside the parentheses. print each child let's run it okay I have done something wrong which is a yeah, comma is needed not an colon so we get so this prints out the list of product rows in the gift list table, including the initial row of column labels. Mystery box is the last and the first one is vegetable box, vegetable basket, mystery box. Yes, seems right. So if we were to write it using uh, the descendants function instead of the children function about two dozen two dozen tags would be found within the table and printed 
including image tags, span tags, and individual TD tags. It's definitely important to differentiate between children and descendants. So let's just, for the sake of testing it out, see how this looks. So it prints out, yeah, it prints out definitely much, much more information that we need than we need, I mean. See here, we get here all these extra lines here that we may not need. So that's the example of uh, children and descendants. So let's talk a little bit about siblings first before we delve into parents. So the beautiful soup next siblings function uh, makes it trivial to collect data from tables, especially ones with title rows. Let's try another example. Scrape shop siblings siblings py. Uh, we can just for sake of time saving we can just copy this code because it's the same as the last one this line is a little bit different so sibling in the s object dot find table select the table and with the id of Gift list .tr next siblings sibling and yep. And now we get all the what's in the table of rows. So the output of this code is to print all the rows of products from the product table, except for the first title row. That's the difference from the previous example. So why does the title row get skipped? It's because objects cannot be siblings with themselves. Anytime you get siblings of an object, the object itself it's not, will not be included in the list. As the name of the function implies, it calls next siblings only. If we were to select a row in the middle of the list, for example, just get back to this uh, and call next siblings on it, uh, only the subsequent siblings would be returned. So by selecting the title row and calling next siblings, we can select all the rows in the table without selecting the title row itself. So a little a note on make how to make uh, select uh, make selection specific. Note that the preceding code will work just as well if we select bs obj.table.tr or even just bs obj dot tr in order to select the first row of the table however in the code we go through all of the trouble of writing everything out in a longer form in this 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 way even if it looks like there is just one table uh, or other tar target tag on the page it's easy to miss things in addition page layouts change all the time what was once first of its kind on the page might someday someday be uh, be the second or th third tag of that type found on the page. To make your scrapers more robust, it's best to, to be as specific as possible when making tag selections. So take advantage of tag attributes when they are available. So as a complement to next siblings, the previous siblings function can often be helpful if there is a an easily selectable tag at the end of a list of siblings tags that you would like to get 
And of course, there are the next sibling and previous sibling sibling functions, which perform nearly the same function as next siblings or previous siblings, except they return single tag single tag rather than a list of them. So let's go to parents, uh, which are uh, we're going to talk about on the right side of this uh, presentation. Not much information there, but uh, bear with me. So when scraping pages, you will likely discover that you need to find parents of tags less frequently than you need to find their children or siblings. Typically, when we look at HTML pages with the goal of crawling them, we start by looking at the top layer of tags and then figure out how to drill our way down into the exact piece of data that we want. Occasionally, however, you can find yourself in odd situations that require beautiful soup parent finding functions, which are dot parent and dot parents. Let's uh, write out an example again. And again, I'm going to, for the sake of time saving, just copy this code because it's the same. And now scrape shop. And parents, let's call it that. And now let's print object find image, comma, and then we need source. Double image gifts image one dot jpg and what we want here to do is to find the parent of the previous sibling and then we need the get text on that so let me just run it and i'll explain what it does got the 15 dollars so this code will print out the price of the object represented by the image at the location dot dot image gifts slash image one dot jpg so the uh, in this case the price is 50 so how does it work okay let's go back here so the first step that this code does it finds the image where the uh, source is dot dot slash image img slash gift slash img one dot jpg this is first selected and we select the parent of that tag, in this case, the TD tag, which is here, this is the tag up here. And we select the previous sibling of the TD tag, in this case, the TD tag that contains that uh, dollar value of that product. And then we select the text within that tag, which is $15. So I hope that you have uh, learned something from this video. So it's, it was a long video with lots of information, but also some good examples. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, subscribe, uh, share this video or comment if you like. And thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Okay, guys. Bye.